Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts of waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edified. Okay, now in this lesson, what I want to go into is, uh, you know, basically the understanding of complaining. And uh, for the most part, uh, complaining unto the Lord. Okay. Um, so what I want to go into is, um, you know, how to complain, when to complain, and what to complain about. Okay. Because uh, obviously we've been called into this ministry. And as the scriptures tell us to do, to endure all things for the elect's sake. Okay. Um, the scriptures speak about many are the afflictions of the righteous. But what? The heavenly father delivers them out of them all okay and more importantly um uh, you know we're, we're at war okay now obviously our war is not carnal at least not at this point okay it's spiritual and uh, we've been called to be spiritual warriors okay so this our walk is uh parallels okay being in the military okay but like i said on a spiritual vibration and one of the things that, uh, you know, had, that, that cannot be uh, compromised is, uh, is our morale, okay? And the mindset that we have, have to have in this thing, okay? And that's why, okay, there, there is a, a mannerism, okay, that we're supposed to walk with and as it pertains to complaining, okay? A certain uh, uh, mannerism that we're supposed to, uh, exude when it comes to that because the reality is this is hell okay we're in hell we're in the worst captivity we've ever been in okay this place absolutely sucks ass you know but nonetheless there's certain things that we cannot compromise why because we're at war okay and as i just quoted the scriptures say endure all things for the elect's sake right so Ultimately, we're doing this thing for the man next to us. Obviously, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But we also have to understand that we're in the battlefield. Okay. And there's a certain vibration that cannot be pushed amongst the ministry. Okay. Because we're all dealing with our own demons and, you know, the flesh and many afflictions like I just quoted. Okay. So, you know, as far as morale goes and building up uh, each other, you know, because the scriptures say what? Exhort one another the more as you see the day approaching. Exhort to one another daily, right? Okay, so really there's really no room, you know, uh, you know, to to basically be pushing a vibration, you know, on the body or on, on a brother, you know, for, for, for that cause. Um that lowers his morale, you know, because we all we all understand uh the condition of this battle and we know what we've been signed up for, you know, and we're gonna have to endure some tough, tumultuous times, man, some perilous times, you know, which the great news about that is set up for the wicked of our nation, and it's not for uh, the elect, okay, Lord willing, we're all that number, okay, so like I said, I just want to go into the understanding of complaining and when, when, what, and uh, how, okay, if that made any sense, so uh, let's jump on there, enough of my blabbering, okay, uh, first, Let's get uh, the definition of complain, right? And it says, express dissatisfaction or or no or annoyance about something. Okay, and according to the scriptures, we can complain. Okay, but like I sp specified, what are we complaining about? When are we complaining? And how were we? How are we complaining? Those are the things that. Uh, really, um, you know, uh, uh, specify or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
you know, hey, as the scriptures say, doing all things decently and in order. Okay. And uh, like I said, there's a mannerism with everything. Okay. With everything in the scriptures that we do. Okay. As the scriptures say, all things are lawful unto me, but not expedient. Okay. And there's just like, there's a mindset, you know, for lack of a better word, there's a mindset when it comes, when, even when it comes to complaining. Okay. Now, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, we're in hell. Shit sucks. Okay. Um, we're the off scouring of the earth. Um, we, we, we're sick and tired of beholding wickedness. You know, um, this ain't life. Um, we're being, we're being pushed in, uh, uh, uh pre I mean, Salakia. We're being, uh, uh, pressured from above and pressured from beneath. You know, everything about this world is wicked except for this truth. You know, so there, there are a lot of things to complain about, right? I read it again. It says, express dis dissatisfaction or annoyance about something, okay? And, and what are we expressing dissatisfaction or annoyance about? About being in Babylon, being in hell, okay? And, and all the, like, like Lot said, being vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, you know? And this is not life. Especially waking up to the truth, as the scriptures say, you know, with much uh, uh, wisdom cometh much sorrow and grief, roughly paraphrasing. OK, why? Because we've awakened to what reality is. And this is so far from reality uh, that is dissatisfying. Right. <laughs> it's dissatisfying and an, an annoyance. Why? Because there is a perpetual hamster wheel every morning that we got to get up and get on, you know. So we are warranted to complain, right? Let's see if I have something else here. Okay, yeah. Let's look up morale. Okay. It says, the confidence, enthusiasm, and discipline of a person or group at a particular time. Read that again. It says, the confidence, enthusiasm, and discipline of a person or group at a particular time, right? And we are a group, okay? We make up the body of Yahweh Shai, okay? And what's very, very important is our confidence. Because we go into that word confidence, it means with faith, okay? So now we see the importance of, 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 of and, and, and what I'm hitting at, brothers, is, you know, let's not be complaining to, to each other and, and moping in our sorrow and, you know, pushing the vibration like we, we <laughs> woe is me, you know? No, nah, that, that, that time has passed, man, okay? That was the vibration Ezra was under for the visions that he was seeing that ultimately made him sick, okay? And you can only imagine, you see? But we're living in the times that all the prophets uh, sought after, okay? The times of the very end. As the scriptures say, better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it thereof. Okay, so the vibration or our morale, okay, should be through the roof. You know, the, uh, the scriptures tell us to lift up the uh, the, the feeble uh, knees. You know, like Apostle Ta always said, you know, the uh, knuckle knuckle dragging nigga. You know, dragging your knuckles on the ground like, oh man, like uh, uh, I forget that elephant off of Sesame Street. You know. <laughs> you know, dragging yourself and moping around. Nah, man. Our Lord, Yahweh Shah got the victory, man. Okay? And if we continue it to the end, we'll be considered what? Joint heirs with him. You know? Ain't really no need to mope. Now, hey, we're in the flesh. We go up and down. Okay? You go up and down. Bound in the base. Not just financially. Okay? Spiritually. You go up and down. Okay? But know who to complain to. Complain to your power. Not to the brother. Okay, now a brother may ask you, hey, 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 what's going on? Hey, hey, how your week been? And, and a lot of times what a brother say, man, I can't complain. You know, my job did this, but whatever. It could be worse. You know, that's, that is a morale booster. Okay, and that's the vibration that should be amongst his body, man. Okay. Uh, so let's get the first pre. This is uh, Second Ezra. Chapter uh, 15, verse 8, Salakia. Let me see. Let me see if I can, if it's something else. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if I can find it. 
see where I want to start it. Bear with me. Jumped out of whack on me. Let's just do this. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. It's a Lockia. Okay, here we go. We getting to it. We getting there, brothers. Bear with me. <laughs> oh boy, bear with me. Second Ezra chapter fifteen. I don't know what was going on with the other version, but we all know who's in the midst. He's in the midst. Uh, let's see. We start at seven, possibly. Yep. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 7. It says, Therefore say if Yahweh by Shimei I was shy, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. Okay? And what represents the Heavenly Father's tongue are the prophets. Okay? The men that are preaching his word, that are prophesying. Okay? Um, and basically letting the world know what the Heavenly Father is about to do. Uh, what's that? Amos, the third chapter. Before the Lord doeth anything, he revealeth his secrets unto the servants. To his servants, the prophets, right? It says, Therefore, it does say of Yahweh by Shemal Shai, I will hold my, my tongue no more, as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those, di in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. And the souls of the just complain continually. You see? So now we we are allowed to complain. Okay? But the key point it says, I'll read it again. It says, uh, let's see where I want to start. Matter of fact, I'll start back at eight. It says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood, and who are, are the innocent and the righteous, okay? The Israel, I mean, the Israelites, okay? You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, right? Okay, and what does it mean by innocent? Well, uh, our enemies uh, have persecuted us uh, wrongfully. Okay, now obviously we sinned and we went against the law, statutes, and commandments, and our punishment was to go into captivity under this devil. Okay, but the atrocities that he's committed, okay, were for no reason. As the scriptures say, uh, 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 feed the flock of the slaughter. What is that? Zechariah, uh, the 11th chapter, feed the flock of the slaughter. Okay, who's the flock of the slaughter? You Israelites, okay, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. It's the opposite of guilty, innocent, okay. So it says, uh, he said, who exercise themselves, behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. Right. But you keep the key point. It says 
innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. You see? So who should we complain and cry to? Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay? And the scriptures tell us how to pray. You know, whether it be in your mind. Okay? And if it's out loud, you, you go into your closet or a room of solitude and you cry unto the Lord. Right? So now we know who, who to cry to. Okay? Let's get another precept. Bear with me. Yep, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 9. Yep, we'll start at 4. Just straight to the point, Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, And Yahweh Bashmael Shah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You see? So here we go with the, uh, the, the you know, as we just read in uh, Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter, okay, that's sighing and crying, okay, that's sighing and crying to who? To Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. It said it, it, once again, it says, "Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof." Right, and this, he's speaking to an angel. Okay, and what does that mark represent? The mark of exemption. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the, the, the raw, the, uh, the raw, or the, the war, if I'm not mistaken, you know, you can, you can go and look at the word. Okay, but it means a mark of exemption. Okay, it's not the mark that we read about in Revelation the 13th chapter. Okay, so this also shows the importance of sighing and crying and complaining unto the Lord. Okay, it's basically, <laughs> it's your ticket out of here. OK, and that's why, uh, you know, the scriptures speak about our people uh, being in everlasting contempt, shame, you know, coming back into the kingdom because this was this is salvation is basically predicated off of doing this, you know, uh, 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 simple act. OK, and I hate to call it simple, but hey, it's basically seeing wickedness. And crying to the Lord, complaining to the Lord about it. Like we read uh, the definition of complaining, okay? Being aggravated or annoyed with, with a certain situation, okay? But like I said, there's a way of going about it, right? But this also shows the importance of doing it. So it's, it's not like, you know, pushing the Bible, like don't ever complain. No, no, no. Like we're saying, we're, we're figuring out the what, who, and how, okay? That's what we're dealing with here, right? It's a, so um, read that again. It says, "Go through the midst." So, like in verse four, and Yahweh by Shemal Shah said unto him, "Go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem." Okay, and it's always a people before it's a place, because right now in Jerusalem, ain't nothing but heathens. Okay, so it's uh, speaking about the people. Okay, which is ultimately scattered abroad, but mainly here in the Americas. Okay, it says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, and you know, like I, I may mention, you know, uh, salvation is predicated off of this simple act, but ultimately it boils down to who uh, the elect, uh, uh, if whether you're of the election or not. Okay, and the reality is, the election will be doing that. Okay, they will be sighing and crying. For the abomination and the wickedness that's going on here, man. Okay? Vexed with the filthy conversation like just as Lot was. Okay? Why? Because we understand what life is supposed to be and what life is not. And the reason why this uh, world is the way it is. Okay? And the great news that's uh, rapidly approaching. Which ultimately is salvation and redemption. Right? Verse 5. And to the others, he said in his uh, mind hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes uh, spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men, which were before the house. OK, so the key point, man, a hey, uh, 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 sign and crying and complaining to the Lord is, is, is very, very important. OK, it's very uh, conducive to salvation. And that's why. Okay, 
uh, we just read to the others, those that are not signing crime, that means you agree with everything Esau Edom is pushing. Okay, you you agree with the LMNOP. Okay, you agree with uh, 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 forced jabs. You know, you agree with uh, uh, genetically modified organisms. Okay, you agree with all the madness and all the filth and the abomination. So that means uh, uh, you're guilty by association. You know, and that's what's about to happen, man. The Lord is about to clean up. Okay, but it all begins with what? Complaining, you know? Why? Because you believe in a higher power, okay? And you have confidence in the higher power, and, and you know this ain't life, and it has to change, okay? So don't get it twisted now. We we are and should be complaining, but it should be complaining unto the Lord. Because as we read, uh, matter of fact, let's go back to it just to refresh it. Just to refresh it. Morale, because this is huge, right? It says the confidence, enthusiasm, and discipline of a person or group at a particular time. Hey, and we know the times that we're living in, man. This shit about to get gangster, you know, like I like to say, you know? And we're going to have to prove that we wholeheartedly believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. We have been, okay? But the test is going to present itself in a different form and fashion, right? Okay, so we got the understanding of morale, you know, and we don't want to compromise morale amongst the brotherhood, man. We're already dealing with demons and uh, internal battles that we face every day within ourselves. So you really don't want to be going to it, brother, man. They, uh, man, um, man I'm, I'm, you know, we we may say, man, I'm sick of this shit, you know, and it's and that's warranted. You know, but man, my my girl doing this to me, my lady. Da, da, da. No, no, no. There, there's a way of going about it, man. Hey, hey, we in hell, brother. I ain't really got nothing to complain about, you know. Uh, and if I do, I'm gonna complain unto the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to push that vibration on you, brother. You know, and that should be the spirit moving forward, especially the times we're coming into. Why? Because we're in a, we're in a war. We're in a war, okay? And we're soldiers. For Yahweh by Shimei Shah, right? So let's get another one. This is uh, the Book of Lamentations, chapter three. And now we're gonna, you know, show you, uh, uh, you know, uh, what to complain about. Okay, and like we just read, you know, for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Okay, the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know, the the, the wicked rulers of this world. You know, there, there's six sinister uh, plots against the just, you know, uh, uh, eyes being privily set against the poor. You Israelites, those are things they complain about. Like King David said, Lord, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. Those are things that we complain about. We got a, a, a slew of examples. OK, when we read the Psalms, like I, the one I just quoted, that was a prayer to the most high. OK, a song to the most high. That King David sung, man. You know? But this is Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 38. It says, out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Right, and we read the scriptures. Uh, what's that? Uh, Isaiah 45 and 7. You know, say, I, I form the light. I create darkness. I make create good and make evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Right? <clears throat> the Lord kills and he makes alive. He wounds and he heals. Right? Just showing you his balance. So verse 38, out of the mouth of the Most High, proceed of not evil and good? And the answer is yes. Verse 39, it says, Wherefore doth a living man complain? A man for the punishment of his sins. You see? So understand what you're complaining about. Okay. Now, obviously, we, we all have infirmities. Okay. And how should we deal with uh, uh, uh you know complaining about infirmity? Should we be Lord? Why you did this to me? No, no, no. Absolutely not. Okay. We got an example of that. What did the Apostle Paul do? He prayed to the Lord to take away that thorn in his side. 
That's how you deal with it. Now, hey, bro, man, hey, man, I'm sick of this. My knee, man, I can't, I can't deal. I don't do it. No, no, that's bad for morale. Okay. Hey, hey, I, well, how you feeling? I, hey, I had better days. You know, my knee bothered me a little bit, but you know, small things to a giant. <laughs> you know, that that's the type of responses that 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 helps build morale. You know, and also lets brothers know that you you dealing with it like a man. Okay. You girding up your loins like a man, okay? And especially the uh, loins of your mind, right? So it's, I read it again, verse 39. It says, wherefore doth a living man complain? A man for the punishments of his sins, right? And a lot, and, 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 and you know, when you read the gospels and, and Yahweh Shai's uh, ministry, okay? When he went around healing people, every time, well, most of the times, if not every time, what did he say? He said, your sins have been forgiven. Okay, you have been healed. Your sins have been forgiven. Sin no more, right? So that shows you a direct connection of our infirmities being connected to what? Our sins. You see? So we really don't want to complain. You know, I, I didn't deserve this. No. You, you, hey, the scriptures say that we uh, we have received less than our iniquities, uh, uh uh, require roughly paraphrasing meaning the lord has punished us less than what we deserve and we all know that okay so we don't really want to be complaining about the, the hardships and the predicaments that we're put in okay because at the end of the day the scriptures say we've all sinned and have fallen short of the glory okay it's just the water you have by shemel shot that we're under grace and his mercy you know continues forever man you know but let's 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 know now we're getting into what to uh, complain about okay don't be complaining about getting jacked up by the most high okay that's a part of it now let's look at this word complain here bear with me Complain is Amon, right? And it says here, complain or murmur, okay? Complain or murmur, right? But you go down. Where is it? Yep, here we go. The Strong's uh, definition of, matter of fact, it's Anan, right? Uh, Aman, Anan, right? And it says um, right there, root to mourn, okay? To mourn, right? So when you read this scripture, it says, wherefore doth a living man come Plain or where doth do a living man mourn a man for the punishment of his sins? Right. This is a part of it. And this is the chastening. Okay. As the scriptures say, when the Lord jacks you up for your sins, he's chastening you as a son and not as a bastard. So why are we, why would you complain about that? You see? So now we're understanding what, what to complain about. Let's get another one. This is, um, Book of Micah, chapter 7. We'll start it. I like this one. Verse 8. Micah 7. I mean, yeah, 7 and 8, but the point is at 9. It says, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh shall be a light unto me. And guess what? We sit in darkness. This is absolute darkness, gross darkness. The people, as the scriptures say, okay? But the Lord has given us a light through his son. The heavenly father has given us a light through his son. You know, our Lord Yahweh okay? 
this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, right? <laughs> it says, uh, verse 9 is the point. It says, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. Let me read that again with power. Micah 79 says, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. You see, and that's the mindset that we got to have. OK, now the afflictions that we go through, the chastening. OK, we understand we still be going off, man. <clears throat> you know. And when we get chastened for something, it's for our betterment. It's to make you better. The scriptures say all things work to the good of them that love the most high. All things, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the good, the bad. All of those things are making you that fine gold that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua wants you to be. Okay? Not what you want yourself to be, what he wants you to be. Okay? And when you can fully understand that, it makes your walk a lot easier. Okay? And you're focused a lot more. Because you're understanding whatever's, hey, like the scriptures say, whatever's brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Because it's all the doings of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. Okay? But yeah, we got to bear the indignation of the Lord. Okay? So, like I said, you know, understand what 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 to complain about now. You know, we don't want to come across as a, as a you know, a, a bickering child. You know? This shit sucks. And, and the beauty... The beauty about it, man, we, we got a slew of examples. All the, all the prophets, man, okay? They sighed and cried unto the Lord, and they'll show you how to do it. And then when they did it in a manner that wasn't pleasing to the Heavenly Father, he, he checked them, okay? Romans 15 and 4, all things written aforetime were written for our learner, okay? Because like I mentioned, one thing that cannot be compromised is the morale of the body, Okay, the body of who? Yahweh Shah. And at the end of the day, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is not going to allow that. Okay. And if you find yourself doing that, check yourself, man. You know, hey, we're in the flesh. We're gonna fall. We're gonna make mistakes. Okay. But these are things that we should uh, uh, meditate upon so that we can create a mindset that is conducive to the body, not just ourselves. Right? So we'll close out with this one. This is a. Uh, Second Timothy chapter two, and we'll start at the top. And you see what it says: "Be strong, right?" <laughs> Second Timothy chapter two, verse one: "Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai." Verse two: "And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also." And that's what it's all about, man. Okay. Building up this this army, so to speak, which is the body of Yahweh Shai, which is a spiritual army, okay, that eventually the Lord is going to turn into a physical army, okay, or a carnal army, and not to be carnally minded, but meaning it's going to manifest physically, okay, now it's spiritual, okay, we don't brandish weapons, we don't do any of that, okay, we just preach the words of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And as we know in Hebrews, the fourth chapter is sharpening to any uh, uh, sword, this word. OK, how were those, those prophets hewn down with, with the word of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah? OK. The scriptures speak about uh, uh, Esau, Edom uh, being torn down with, with, with the uh, word of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah and then eventually uh being taken out of power by the glory of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah, that high holy host. You see? But it shows the power of the tongue, and the scriptures speak about that. Okay, verse 3. It says, Thou therefore, is the point, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. You see? Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Let's look at hardness here. See if we get any meat. Strong's G twenty five fifty three. Carcapa Theo. Carcapa Theo. 
and it says um, to suffer, <laughs> right? Uh, endure evils, uh, hardships, trouble to be afflicted. You see? To be afflicted. And that's what we've been called into, okay? But we got to endure it. We got to suffer it. Just like our Lord Yahweh Shah did. Okay, just like all the other renowned men of the scripture did. Could you imagine uh, uh, being born in the times of uh, uh, Jeremiah, which <laughs> most likely we were, okay? Um, and, and, and having to understand old Ezra, the time of Ezra, and understanding that, look, salvation is, it, it, it is you know, you, you're going to have to rest with your fathers and come back in your lot and rest with your fathers and come back in your lot. You know, however many times the Lord had it set up, but basically not understanding that this wasn't the time of salvation, just like the 12. Okay. When they asked you, I was shy. When shall the end of this world be in the beginning of the, that followeth? Okay. And being told, you know, look, it, it's not now. Okay. You're going to have to bear your cross and then um, in due season, uh, redemption will come. Just like he told them, well, Lord, we've forsaken all. What was laid up for us? Okay. And he told him, look, you, you 12 shall sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay? But not yet. You got to go through it. You know? So there's a vibration and there's a, 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 a sense of hardness. Okay? That you have to possess in this thing, man. Okay? And you have to exude it. Okay? You can't be the one moping around holding your head low. You're going to fuck up the morale, morale of the body or the camp. Okay? Hey, but the Wadi Yahweh by Shema Shah for giving us the spirit and the understanding and uh, giving us like-minded men to help boost our morale, which is our confidence in Yahweh by Shema Shah. Okay? So, yeah, I just wanted to put that together, man, and uh, I hope hopefully that made sense. And, 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 and hey, as we always intend to do, uh, that it edified. Okay? So, uh, with that, I want to say, Kwam Yashirala and Ababa Ba, Shalom.